Welcome to One Way Apologetics. Salam al T20 you out there this evening. Uh, now, tonight, I'm not going to be on cam. I wanted to just come on cam at the start. Um, I have quite a few kids in the house. They're going to be in and around me. So I will have my cam off tonight. But uh, just for tonight, I'm going to be live again tomorrow night. Tonight's probably not going to be too uh, long of a live. Uh, but I wanted to get the exposure out there uh, tonight and go live tomorrow for a different video. So let me go ahead and close down. Close down my screen here, and we'll start off the live stream the way that we normally would, of course. I pray to you, Father, in the name of your Son, and by the power of your Spirit, that you grant me the ability to speak clearly and boldly and take captive any arguments against your holy scriptures. Please look after the people that are in Israel and Palestine, and please. Uh, I pray for the innocent persons over there. Anyone going through any mental health issues or health issues, please, Father, um, look after them because you know better than we do what's going on with them. And please uh, be with them, Father. And also, I'd like to lift up some of your strong soldiers. You may keep blessing them and their families. Uh, people like Hatun Tosh, Daughter of Christ, and Jay. Also, uh, Adam Seeker. And, of, of course, Christian Prince. Rob Christian, Al Fadi, David Wood, the Biblicist, uh, Brother Prophet Google, um, Sam Shimon, AK Sniper, Dr. Tony Costa, Steve Hussein, Reverend Anthony Rogers, Brother Ask Truth Apologetics, Islam Critique, Lloyd DeJong, Somali Christian TV, uh, my dear brother Eric over at the Cross and the Crescent, uh, Bob the Builder and Sister K.O. to London, my dear brother Thaddeus over at Reason Dancers, of course, our dear sister, the author pro-life Chloe, and of course, my dear brother Avery from God Logic Apologetics, and my brother Albie uh, from Answering Unitarians, and not the Assyrian guy anymore, and any other apologist or Plymouth not specifically mentioned here. Also, I also ask God that you watch over the women giving birth this year, and may their children love you, Lord, and please bring back any Muslim or Hebrew Israelite back home to you. Lastly, I ask that through this stream today, just one comes to know the knowledge of the true triune God. I ask this in the name of your glorious Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. So again, welcome, y'all. Welcome, all. So what we do in here is we're doing a little bit of a rebuttal to this man named Hamza. That's right. Y'all probably know this guy named Hamza. We, uh, we, we've talked about him a few times. Um, he's got this channel called Hamza's Den. So, <laughs> on over there, he had this discussion, and I believe it was with a Christian. Now, I'm going to just pull it up here so that I can get it playing as well. So, there's a few parts in this video that I actually wanted to go over. Because it actually shows the ignorance of our dear friend, uh, Hamza. Now, it's not, it's not too, it's not going to be too long of a live stream today maybe about a half hour uh but i just wanted to get my first one out there for right now and then tomorrow night i'm gonna do a little bit longer for live stream i'm gonna open it up with the video i'm gonna be on camera of course because i'm gonna kick half the kids out of my house tonight or by tomorrow and then i'll probably open it up for some discussion tomorrow night i was going to open it up for discussion tonight uh but i do have too many kids in the house to do that so maybe i'll do that on TikTok afterwards. But Getting into the video at hand, we have Mr. Hamza. That's right, y'all. Mr. Hamza from Hamza's Den. Uh, so before I do start this, um, David Wood did say a while ago, hey, Salam Mama C. Oh, word. We got the word and I up in here. We got Tony Masters up in here. What? We got JP on cut up in here. What's up, JP? I was actually just watching your video. Um, I'm open. Uh, hit me up, brother. I'm not. Uh, Waiting, uh, I heard you, Radar, and another guy were going to be on Chloe's channel doing a debate. I wouldn't mind seeing that one. Wouldn't mind seeing that one. I th I think he said it was Thursday. Maybe I'll just uh, text Chloe quickly after this and 
see what she says about it too. But yeah, I wouldn't mind watching that debate. Uh, Salam Mama Seed, each and every one of you is out there. God bless. So yeah, so David Wood said that we should focus on one or two of the uh, higher Dawa people here on YouTube. So uh, Butter Mind Jay uh, from Jane DOC chose to go after a couple of them. Uh, so I chose this one myself. Uh, maybe we'll talk about it. I, I was just actually just watching your video uh, that you were doing about uh, Sam and uh, William thinking that uh, you and God Logic were going to come become Catholic. I think that was the one that you did yesterday. I was actually just watching that one before I come over here. I was almost late for my live stream because I was watching your video. But <laughs> but anyway, I decided to go after Hamza myself because I feel that uh, Hamza isn't that knowledgeable and he's a little bit more sneakier than he is knowledgeable. And I wanted to point that out this evening as well. So that's why it's not going to be too long. We'll probably do a little bit longer one tomorrow night. And I know Sam Shimon is live tonight too. Uh, so that's another reason why uh, we'll probably do a little bit earlier one tonight. So what we're going to do is we're going to listen to this argument by Hamza. So this is an argument. He's going to tell this Christian that he doesn't know the words of Jesus. But why don't we know the words of Jesus? So let me go ahead here a little bit. We'll start here. I won't allow you to escape that subject. Me personally. That's the way I want to be. Good. We were having a debate. Right. And he comes in and he starts to mention another thing. All right. And then I, I say what I believe. And then he went into something else. And I said that. And he went into something else. And I, I said the original argument. That I was what's, trying, it, what's the original uh, argument? Let's the original start argument that. was as a Catholic, we, as a Roman Catholic, we believe that Jesus, the Holy Spirit and God are part of the Trinity. Now, my belief in that is that through the Bible here I am talking with my mic muted again um Christians please if you're going to have a discussion on the Trinity uh the Father the Son and the Spirit do not say they are part God or part of God please don't use the word part in there at all try to find any other terminology you'd be able to use, uh, like fully God. So the Father, the Son, and the Spirit are fully God, not part God. So, but anyway, let's continue here. For the teaching of the Bible, we have many examples of when Jesus was talking to the Father. Father, forgive me. No, no, Jim, Jim. No, 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 no. You changed, you changed what you said. No, 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 look, please, please. Uh, oh, look, I'm I an say? old man, so I let say? me. The discussion was about Jesus that he's not, that he's not God. So I, I want to take him to the Nicene Creed, where actually the proto-Orthodox, which is the Catholics, they have agreed to it without without the Anastasian uh, Creed too. Yeah, Athanasius Creed too. So that's, you have got two Nicene Oh, wow, that's very weird. This old guy sitting there right there with Hamza says, well, the Christians think Jesus is God. Well, let's just go to the Nicene Creed. The Nicene Creed apparently teaches that Jesus isn't God. Well, the last time I thought it did. But later, let, let me just go ahead and I'm going to read the Nicene Creed quickly. Just to, let, let's just see if the Nicene Creed actually affirms or denies the deity of Christ. So let's just see here. Because notice Hamza didn't refute his brother and he's not going to. So let me go here and we'll let, let, let's see what the Nicene Creed here says. It says, we believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, begotten from the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of the same essence of the Father. Hmm. Through him, all things were made for us and our salvation. He came down from heaven. He became incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made human. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate. He was suffered and buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, he ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Will He, he will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will never end. And we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. He proceeds from the Father and the Son. And with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He spoke through the prophets. 
And we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We affirm one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look forward to the resurrection of the dead and to life in the world to come. Amen. So, in reading the, the Nicene Creed, where did it deny the deity of Christ? It actually affirms the deity of Christ. Begotten from the Father before all ages. God from God. Light from light. True God from true God. Begotten, not made of the same essence as the Father. Why is this important? Because in the Quran, it actually, Muhammad actually states, if, 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 if Allah was to have a son, Muhammad would be the first of his worshipers. So therefore, if Jesus is the son of Allah, Muslims should be the first of his worshipers, according to their prophet. But let's continue. See and the teacher, uh, a little bit. No, no. The thing is, the thing is, you don't, you don't need to do that. Yeah, I'll explain. Okay. Do you understand? That? We, we I, I'm, have... I'm going to say something controversial to you. Right. You have no idea what Jesus said. We were in talk. We were in talk. Right. I did a baptism, a confirmation, um, and I was Christian. If we're if we're writing down and we're taking score. On the stupid things that Ham Samaya actually says. Uh, throw a big check mark down for that one. Um, I will address this a little bit later on in the live stream. Uh, but he's going to continue on with his argument. And I want you to hear what he means here. So he says that I'm going to say something controversial. You don't know the words of Jesus. Well, let's see why he says that. No, but the, 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 the problem is... Your Christianity is premised on an idea. And the idea is that when you read the Gospels, you think you're reading the eyewitness testimony of the chosen disciples of Jesus, inspired by the Holy Spirit. Yes. This is all you believe. Yeah. This is, okay. But that's not true. But okay. That's what I've no, I know you were taught. But the problem you have is what you were taught is not true. I'll explain why. According to, according to New Testament Christians, New Testament uh, scholarship of the New Testament, yeah, the authors of the Gospels are anonymous. Absolutely, historicity of it. Anonymous. You don't know who wrote it. Because after first, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But no, I know that came after the time of Jesus. No, no. The problem you have with that, the problem you have with that, Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John. A copy so, of a copy of so a copy Mark, of a no, copy. No, Mark is supposed to be the first gospel. So it's not on you, it's not on you. Mark is the first gospel. Yeah? Yeah. There's no disciple of Jesus called Mark. Okay? And the, the, but the problem you have the next gospel, Matthew, 10 years later, copies 90% from Mark. Synoptics. So the question you would ask at that point, and this is the example I use. Imagine there's a party. What's your name? Gem. 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 Are you from Turkey? Yeah, yeah. Right. His father is Turkey. That's... Yeah, yeah. Okay, so... The person is a party, Gem. And uh, you go to the party. But I don't go to the party. And I come to you and ask you... And, and then you come to me and ask me what happened at the party. Does that make any sense? Yeah. I understand that, yeah. You were at the party, I wasn't. Why would you come to me and ask me what happened at the party? All right, so here what he's saying is if we go to secular scholars, they will date the gospel of Mark to be the first gospel, and then Matthew, and then Luke, and then John after that. And what he's also saying is there's an, also another source that uh, Mark and Matthew would have both, uh, uh, scholars believe that they would have been um, using or appealing to. And then certain scholars would actually say that Matthew uh, copies a lot of Mark's writings. So what he's saying here is we don't actually know what the words of Jesus is, is because why would Matthew be taking from Mark 
and Mark wasn't even an apostle where Matthew would have been. So it doesn't make sense for the apostle to go to somebody who got like Mark, who received his teaching from an apostle instead of going to Peter himself. Why do you go to Mark is basically what he's saying here. Now, again, I'm going to address all of this and everything. And at the end of the video, there is another part of the video that I want to bring up. And I'm just going to play a little bit of it here. And only because I want to get like his last little, the last little part. So there's two parts that I'm going to address. This first part here that we just heard of why he denies uh, the words of Jesus. And then this last part. So let's go over here and check this out here. If the Pharisees are just petitions, the followers of Jesus, yeah. why then would the Pharisees be hunting those who follow Jesus' message? Doesn't make sense. To release Peter and John, and he and if because the Pharisees didn't have, okay. because my bad, y'all went a little further than what I should have, uh, so I just backed it up. So here's the argument here that we're going to refute as well. You would have to ask this question, and it gets worse than this. It, it, the rabbit hole goes deep, man. Because I'm going to make another claim now. Paul wasn't a Pharisee. Paul wasn't a Pharisee. Okay. The reason Paul wasn't a Pharisee because the Pharisees didn't have a problem with Jesus. Yeah. I mean, understand the logic. You're a Pharisee. Yeah, you Jesus has been crucified or whatever in your in, in the in the scripture. And you've got you've arrested Peter and John, his disciples. Yeah. And you go to the Sanhedrin, Galamiel, the leader of the Pharisees. But I think a lot of this happened because there was a lot of power listen, that had been brought from the listen, power of Jesus. Listen, what I'm saying oh. to you. The leader of the Pharisees, Galamia, Paul's teacher, the leader of the Pharisees petition the Sanhedrin to release Peter and John and he and if you imagine the uh, the, uh, the Sanhedrin is like the Senate the Republicans and the Democrats okay so he got Galamiel the leader of the Pharisees got the petition for them to vote to release the disciples of Jesus right and he, now the thing is this if that's true the petition to, that what he's talking about right now is a very bad misrepresentation of Acts chapter 5, which I'm going to be re uh, refuting in just a minute. Why then would the Pharisees be hunting the followers of Jesus, his followers? So Jesus was a popular movement at the time. And in the region, especially in the region of where Jesus was arrested. All right. So we've heard the claims. The first claim, of course is we don't know the words of Jesus. There's no way that we can know the words of Jesus because secular scholars claim that Mark was the first gospel written, then Matthew, then Luke, and then John. They He also, he believes that there was a Q source. He didn't name it here, but he does believe that as well. So he says, why would Matthew copy from Mark when Matthew was the actual apostle and Mark wasn't? Well, that's a good question if it were true. I'll address that in a second here. But first, I want to address his misrepresentation of Gamiel. Of Gam Gamaliel. So, start off when verse 33. And it says, when they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill him. But a Pharisee in the council named Gam Gamaliel, uh, a teacher of the law, held an honor by all the people, stood up. So it wasn't like he was the top guy. He was just held in honor. That was always just one of them. Stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. He said to them, men of Israel, take care of what you are about to do with these men. For before these days, Thaddeus, or Thaddeus rose up, claiming to be somebody. And a number of, a number of men about 400 joined him. He was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the, of the census and drew away from some of the people. After him, too, he too perished 
and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. If this plan is, uh, if this plan or this undertaking is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be opposing God. So they took his voice or took his advice. So they took his advice, sure. But he wasn't saying that we're never going to kill these guys again. We're not going to do this. Basically, what he's saying is these other people, the, the one that founded the movement after he ended up being on, well, I'm not on TikTok, after he ended up dying, everybody just dispersed. And then after a few years, the movement was gone. So that's all Gamiel is saying at this point in time. He's just saying, well, they're, they're the one that founded this, Jesus, we, we just killed him. He just died. So give it time. Let's see if they just disperse. That doesn't mean they weren't going to hunt them ever again, Hamza. That, that, so the problem here, the problem here. So we can see here that it said that, or sorry. So we can see here that it was said that if the movement is by man, it will fade out. And if its form is from God, you can't stop it. So as I said, he was just simply saying here that they don't want to kill the men just to see if they fade away or not. But that doesn't mean the Sanhedrin didn't want to have the Christians on alive. To me, that's just the stupidest argument that you can make. But again, when we read just one or two verses and come up with our own story, that's what type of argument that one would be able to give when it comes to the Bible. So what I would suggest uh, our friend Dear Hamza to do is to just read more than one or two verses of the Bible the next time that you want to do that. So. So I just want everyone to remember the standards on which Hamza formulates his arguments, because this is actually important. First off, Hamza formulates his arguments based upon secular scholar information. Also, when he's trying to make an argument, what he will do is take one or two verses and make up his own story and not care about what the, verse, uh, what the rest of the verses actually say. So you hear when he was talking about Gimiel. And he didn't actually explain what Gimiel said in Acts, but he actually just went on to make his own story and his own conclusion from it. What is wrong with this, though? Right? A Muslim would say, what is wrong with this? Hamza, when talking about Islam, would he allow a Christian to quote a secular source about the authenticity of the Quran? Think about that, y'all. If we were talking about the authenticity of the Quran, would Hamza allow a secular score or a secular source to be quoted? Even if this person had all the credentials he needed to be a scholar in the Quranic preservation field, would Hamza still accept him? Definitely not. Hamza will only accept specific scholars that agree with him. And if a scholar disagrees with Hamza, Guess what he's going to tell you? That scholar's not an authority to me, so I don't have to accept what he says. So if Hamza rejects secular scholars as being an authority on the Quran preservation, then he should not use secular scholars to suit his argument. Just so you know, Hamza's secular scholars are not our authority. Bart Ehrman is not our authority. So quit using them as if they are. Maybe instead of Instead of reading secular scholars, maybe maybe you should read the early church fathers, which weirdly enough would bring me into my next my next response, which would be your opening argument. So this this is gonna be my last response to Hamza for the night. Of course, I was gonna open it up for discussion. I'm gonna do that tomorrow night though instead of tonight. I'm probably gonna run over to TikTok. And do a little bit of live about uh, who is Jesus over there. Let's see if people know who Jesus is over on TikTok tonight. So, first, <clears throat> before I address his faulty view argument, I want to point out his double standard. So, when one looks at the Quran and you ask the question, who penned down the Quran? 
the tafsir doesn't any but identify anybody we actually have to go to the hadith which identifies certain scribes but it doesn't say which scribes wrote which karat does it so how would he know which scribe wrote surah 25 in the Haskrat. I would like to see that manuscript, and I would like to see the I would like to see the uh, penmanship or the the name of the author, the one that penned down Surah twenty five in the Hafs manuscript, and I would like it from the time of Muhammad, please, not two hundred years after in a hadith. Just saying. So now we know Muslims cannot substantiate their claim of authorship of their Quran outside of Hadith. Now look, let's look at what the early Christians actually said about the authorship of the New Testament. Now, what I'm going to do here is just bear with me a second here, y'all. I got to open up my, my trusty Google Docs. Let me go ahead and open up my slideshow and let's see if I can't get this baby on the go for first. There we go. That's what we like to see. Let me come down here now. Is it here? Nope. It's here. There it is. Slideshow. Boom. All right. Everybody can see that now. So the biggest claim skeptics have is that the New Testament authors are anonymous. But is this true? And can we know what the early Christians accepted as sacred scripture? Hamza, get a paper, grab a pen, and don't make this mistake again. Tertullian of Carthage, Clement of Alexandria, Irenaeus of Lyons, the Matorian Fragment, Justin Martyr, and all the way down to Papias of Herapolis is our chain of authorship when it comes to finding out the authors of the New Testament. So, let's find out if we know who the authors were. All right. Tertullian of Carthage, around 207, this is about 130, sorry, 170 years after the death of our Lord and Savior, says, the Gospels were written by Matthew and John, who were apostles, and Luke and Mark, who were apostolic men. Mark's gospel is the record of Peter's preaching. So Mark just didn't go around getting information from anybody. He actually recorded Peter's preaching. This is what we hear from the early church. Let's continue. Clement of Alexandria says that Mark wrote his gospel. Matthew and Luke published first. And John's gospel was the last one to appear. What? Clement of Alexandria. What are you talking about? Hamza from Hamza's den just said that Matthew copied from Mark. Well, how did Matthew copy from Mark? But Clement of Alexandria tells us that Matthew was written before Mark. Huh. Weird. Weird, huh? Weird. All right, well, let's get But John's gospel was the last one to appear. So we have another confirmation of the gospel authorship. Irenaeus of Lyons, 130 to 202, run around 180, writes Matthew's gospel was the first one written. What? Not again. Not again. Matthew's gospel was the first one written. Mark, a disciple, Peter handed down in his gospel what Peter had preached. Luke, a companion of Paul, recorded in a book the gospel preached by him. And John, the disciple of the Lord, published a gospel. So far, it looks to me like the gospels are not anonymous. It looks to me like we actually know who wrote the gospels. That, that To me, that's what it looks like. It looks like Irenaeus of Lyons truly believed that the gospel that Mark had penned down was literally the teachings from the disciple Peter. He truly believes what Luke wrote down was truly a record of Paul's preaching. Of course, John wrote his own gospel and Matthew wrote his own gospel. Matorian fragment, Matthew and Mark, Luke the physician and the companion of Paul wrote his gospel and John was an eyewitness 
who was an eyewitness, wrote his gospel. And then we get to Justin Martyr. Now, Justin Martyr doesn't identify them by name, but he says Christians possessed the memoirs of Jesus, which were also called the Gospels. These were written by apostles and by those who were their followers. So affirms some of them were written by the followers, some of them were written by the apostles. Then we get to Papias of Herapolis. He was the first one to refer to the Gospel of Matthew and Mark, and he wrote that Mark based his Gospel on Peter's preaching. So, Mr. Hamza, yes, 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 we do have information from the early church on the authorship of the gospel. The problem is, is that you don't read it. And this is the hypocrisy when it comes from Muslims, y'all. And, and this is one of the standards I want to hold Muslims to. Muslims, or sorry, when we go to the Quran, and when we're talking about when we're talking to Muslims, they're going to say, well, you have to go to the tafsir. You have to go to the hadith to understand why this verse was revealed or the understanding of the verse. But yet they don't go to the early church fathers for the understanding of the verse. They have never read them. So why do you demand we go to your sources when you don't go to ours? That is the hypocrisy of Islam right there. And Hamza is a prime example of it. It is so easy to refute this guy. All you actually have to do is read the actual sources and show him that he has no actual idea what he's talking about. So yes, we can trust the words of Jesus because we have a chain of authorship in the church fathers who affirm the authorship of our gospels. Why does he believe that he, that the, uh, that everything is authentic and, and that Muhammad said this and, and that these verses were revealed at this point in time. He re, he believes all of this because of the tafsir and the hadith. <laughs> so therefore, I just hold him to the same standard when it comes to Christianity as that he would hold a Christian when it comes to talking about the Quran. And with saying that again, Y'all, I did say it was just going to be a quick live, probably a good half hour, but I am going to be back tomorrow night. I did work all night tonight. I am going to be working all night tomorrow night till 8 o'clock. I'm going to probably set this up for 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. I'm going to try to get some Muslims up here tomorrow as well. So we will have an open discussion and we'll get stuff on the way. I may even have my brother, the word and I or somebody up here with me tomorrow. But anyways. There is only one God, and that is the true triune God of Scripture. Abortion is murder, and there is only one way to paradise, y'all, and that is through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.